In the CNCPS program that AMTS is based on, feed analyses are very important to the final results of your predictions. One of the convenience features that AMTS.farm has in their program is the ability to import feed analyses. Let's start in the feed screen. You can see that in the feed screen, we have our library values over here. These are the values that come from the AMTS or active feed banks. We have different feed banks to choose from. In this case, I have AMTS commercial, AMTS EU feed banks, which are feeds that are specific to the European area, AMTS feeds, and AMTS tropical. So AMTS commercial feeds are going to be feeds that are um, commercially available and they are locked for analysis. So you can't change the analyses on those. And over here I have an example. You can see the locked key next to those. And these are all commercial feeds. AMTS feeds are things like your typical forages, um, fat feeds you can see right now that I have highlighted hay crop forages. If you tip down this, you can see the, the feed types to choose from. So we're going to just illustrate hay crop forage. And over here are the selection of hay crop forages that are available in the feed library. Now these are what we call library values in that they are an average of feeds of that type. And we've identified these different feeds using these designations of how much crude protein NDF and LNDF is. And that just gives you a simple designation of that feed. Now, when you have sent feeds over into the farm feed bank, you can hide that feed library. These are my farm feeds. So these are what are gonna be typical to my farm. It is very important in the CNCPS model, which amts.farm is based on, to utilize feed analyses that are relative to the feeds that you're feeding. You can edit these either manually by bringing up the feed that you want to work on. In this, it has the current feed value, and then it has the new version. And in the new version, you can you can go down through these selections and you can manually change them. A much easier and more convenient way, and also most of the time much more accurate way to do this is to have those feed values automatically brought in. We have worked with the major feed laboratories to ensure that there's a proper matching of feed nutrient categories with feed analyses labels. That was worked on a few years ago and the result was what we call a standard XML format feed analysis. Before you use the import feed analysis function, you're going to want to make sure that you have your feed analysis that you've sent off to your laboratory in the proper file location. We've covered how you both import from a website or receive in an email in another video, and the link to that is right here. We're going to assume that for this farm, I have already placed the feed analysis that I sent off to the laboratories in the proper feed analysis folder. And now I'm going to pull in some analysis to go over my mixed hay, which is right here. I click on import feed analysis. I select the particular file that I know refers to this hay test. And I click on that, click open the feed analysis import action box will pop up. Sometimes feed analyses that you sent off and get re and received back as a standard XML file will have more than one analysis. So when you click on the drop down, you may see multiple analysis available to choose. I'm going to choose the second cutting import for this one. It gives what the values are in this column from the feed analysis standard XML file. When you're working in the farm file, in likelihood you will have already pulled in a hay that is similar to the analysis that you have to have in your farm feed library. I'm going to choose this mixed hay because this is the hay I pulled in. Now, if I had not already pulled in an ingredient into my farm feed library, I could use this import bar. In this case, I want to look in my hay crop forage and I would scroll down through here. The convenient thing about loading this analysis is that I can see what some of the principal components of this feed are, and I can scroll down through. Then I can choose a feed from my 
feed library that will match that analysis closely. I'll explain to you why it's important to choose a feed that matches the analysis in a moment. I'm going to scroll down through here and this is a mixed grass hay. I know that it has some clover in it. I'm going to see if I can find one that sort of closely matches this. So we have a mixed hay. This is about an 18% protein. I'm going to send it into my farm feed library. So now as I scroll down to the bottom, because it will be located on the bottom, I'm going to select that hay to match against my actual hay. Remember, the library values that come in the AMTS library are based on averages of all the forage library feeds that meet these characteristics. So I'm going to click on that. This is what the current value of the feed is, meaning this feed right here that's in my farm feed library. The difference column actually highlights areas where there is a greater than 10% difference between the feed analysis value and the farm library value. It doesn't necessarily mean that these values are wrong in the feed analysis value, but the red color will highlight it and show you that value. So it draws your eye to it and you can decide, is this a good value? Do I need to maybe get another sample because we had something happen on that particular sample? You can always choose not to import values if you uncheck the value, if you feel that that value is an error, or for some reason you just don't want to pull that value in, you can uncheck it. I'm going to talk a little bit about the options we have before we pull this in. Sometimes nutritionists will choose to, and this happens more regularly with silage crops, where you do subsequent regular analyses like corn silage, they will choose to have a full mineral and vi vitamin profile done on the first analysis and then subsequent analysis that they're taking throughout the feeding period, perhaps they're not having that MinVit pack done, but their original analysis that they did, which would be the current feed value, the minerals, the vitamins that are specific to that sample, because these are something that the feed analyses laboratories, if you don't request that minerals and vitamins are run on that sample, they will use library values. So if you paid the extra value to get the minerals and vitamins run, perhaps you don't want the library values that would be on your later feed analysis. So in that case, you could check this unselect MinVits. You have three ways to name your feed as you transfer it. If you just want to transfer the lab analysis values and not rename the feed, then you choose this first one, which is checked by default. This would be the case where you've already renamed it as something that you have in the farm. Some examples that people use are like corn silage pile one. You can see right here, we've got the 2019 second cut hay and the 2019 first cut hay. We may want to import the feed analysis value over that feed because this is the, the feed that's actually being used in the ration. In this example, when we're using a library name, this is quite a long name and you want to have the name as short as possible when you're working in the recipe screen. So in this case, we might rename the feed. It will derive that first part of its name by default by what you named it when you sent it in for analysis. In this case, this 2019 second medium mixed grass, we're going to stick with that name. The third option is to copy the feed and transfer the value. What that does is it will keep this foundation feed as a feed in your farm feed library, give you the opportunity to create a second feed that is a copy of this feed but will be in your library. So you would end up in this case, if you chose this option, you would end up with both the mixed, mixed hay name here and also this hay here. They would both be in your farm feed library. If you choose to rename the feed and transfer the value, you would only have this feed here in your library. This feed would be, this name would be written over. So I'm going to transfer the values. You'll always get a warning that tells you that once you do this, you can't go back. So I'm going to click OK. And it tells me the transfer is complete. Now it doesn't close this box because it gives you the opportunity to load another feed from that feed analysis file that you chose. 
Well, in this case, if I wanted to, I could also import this 2019 first cutting sample. The another option while you're still in this box is to load the analysis file again. It takes you back to the feed analysis file that you have under amts.cattle.pro or wherever you hold your feed analysis. I could choose a different analysis. I could use that to open and that would offer some different feeds. So if you've sent multiple analysis in to either multiple labs or at multiple time points for the same farm, load analysis file will take you back to that folder. When you are done importing the feed analysis into the farm as you want, go ahead and click exit. That closes this box. Then you can see that I now have my 2019 second MMG hay. I can look at what the analysis is. In this case, because I had the time points performed, it gives me a nice digestion graph showing me with the three time points for 30, 120, and 240 hours digestibility. So now I have a feed in my feed library that more closely fits what the animals are actually receiving. This is a very simple tool. It cuts down on keying errors potential in just hand editing. We are ensured that the right nutrients are going into the right places in the program. We don't have to assess whether we're putting the right numbers in. The laboratories and our programmers have taken care of making sure that information meshes. So that's it for this video. Please look to our video page for other training videos on how to use a program or special program feeder features.